I'm Julie Barkey with Session Update. The 2012 legislative session is over, but it couldn't conclude without the usual goodbye speeches, last day debates, and a veto by the governor. Now you heard the speeches by roughly a dozen retiring senators, and it was noted that Senators Linda Scheid and Gary Kubley passed away within the past year after lengthy illnesses, and you heard their names mentioned more than once on the floor today. On another note, we could soon learn the fate of the revised tax bill that was sent to the governor yesterday. In it, the business property tax was frozen for one year, not two, which was the key revision in that proposal. The governor will address the media at 545 today on the passage of the Viking Stadium bill. He could likely comment on the tax bill as well. Now, the Senate passed the stadium bill earlier today with the final vote of 36 to 30. Immediately following that vote, the bill's authors, Senator Julie Rosen and Representative Maury Lanning, met with the media. We continue our coverage at this time with reaction to the stadium bill passage. Uh, naysayers in this room right here, but we got it done. We got it done for the state, and um, we have, we're going to have an excellent stadium. We made a huge investment um, going forward, and I think we did the right thing today. So we can get that, mark that off. We've created jobs. I'm a little emotional right now. I'm probably not making much sense, but um, um, it feels really good. It feels really, really good. So thank you for uh, putting up with this and uh, all of our comments about it's the bill's going to be introduced next week. <laughs> the bill's coming next week, and it took a while, but this is a major project, and it takes time. And uh, I w I'd just like to thank all the people that came to the table to make this project real. And a special thank you to my great partner here. Uh, Representative Lanning, he's been wonderful to work with. So I'm going to turn it over to him. Before you leave? Yes, yeah, sir. Are you uh, no, no, I'm staying. I'm just, okay, we'll no, just want to cry, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, well, what a great feeling uh, after this uh, many, many years of working hard to try and get this deal done. And along the way, all kinds of people saying, there's no way this will never happen. Uh, and we'd have uh, celebrations along the way, and then all of a sudden, great disappointments. We, it was really a roller coaster ride. But I, I just want to say that uh, the leadership that Senator Rosen has shown is truly extraordinary. And you can't do anything like this without extraordinary leadership. And she has been absolutely remarkable. I couldn't have asked for a better partner uh, to get this uh, job done. You have to work together, the House and the Senate. If, unless you have the House and the Senate on the same page working together, you're not going to get good things done. And the other thing we said from the very beginning, this had to be a bipartisan effort. I knew there were not 68 votes in my Republican House caucus for this deal, and she knew the same thing in hers. And so you got to work with the other party. And all too often in this political world, uh, you have issues that divide where people are not coming together. And I think this is a classic illustration of what you can do, good things you can do when you work together across the aisle. So, Senator, terrific. It's been a pleasure. You know that. In retrospect, do, can you pinpoint any kind of critical turning point that really made the difference? For instance, Commissioner Goodell's visit, or does anything stand out as that's when you knew? things are going to go here. Well, I, I think it's actually been a combination of many events, and I, I truly believe Commissioner Goodell's visit, um, uh, laying down the facts, this is what's going on, this is what's going to happen, let's get it done, you can't wait till next year. I think that was a very uh, resounding, um, that to us is a no vote, so, um, and that was good to mm -hmm. deliver it to all four leaders. We were in the room, and I think they were all on the same page after that. I actually do believe uh, what happened last year or last week with the um, uh, the bonding proposal actually had a silver lining, and that was that yeah. it brought the attention to the entire state, uh, good, bad, or or whatever you felt about it. People knew that the stadium issue was at the Capitol, and they wanted us to take a vote on it, and that's what we just did. And I think we were very responsible going forward. So it was just one piece at a time that built up this momentum. But these are major projects. I mean, this is a major investment. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's in the best interest of the state, I truly believe, and a lot of other people do, obviously. Many other people do because we got it passed. 
but um, it takes time and you are going to have your ebb and flow and your ups and downs and um, and it was as I said last night it's kind of like childbirth and then you <laughs> after it's done you got the product and you're like I'm sorry I was angry at you <laughs> I'm sorry I ripped your head off but that's okay <laughs> This has been you've been trying for 12 years, not you specifically, but what I mean, just generally about what was it about this year that that was present that wasn't present other times? What was it that made folks sort of as a body say, whatever it takes, we're gonna do it this year rather than put it off? Obviously, the lease was up. I think that, that was, was the that, but that's that started the, the whole serious yeah. conversation. I've been author, co author on these bills for, yeah. for years, and um. And it just never could get the momentum. There was always something else that had to, um, and, and obviously you, you have to be kind of pushed a little bit to bring something like this onto, uh, um, to bring all the players to the table to agree to get to get a, a good workable plan going forward. And I think it was a perfect storm with the lease and the roof collapsing and just just a whole bunch of different factors. We have an election coming up. It doesn't make sense to wait till next year. So there was a, a whole bunch of different factors that created this vote today. Hey, Senator, uh, last night, uh, Representative Landing, after the House vote, talked about the seven years and the perseverance and the patience. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, this has got to be pretty a, a very big deal for you, I would imagine. Just how does it feel to have moved this uh, project up the mountain and finally got it up the top? Well, as I said, Jeff, I, I, I almost, I really, truly feel like crying. I really do because um, it is a perfect example for the people of the state to know that the process does work and it works in a very bipartisan manner. And we listened and we got a project done. It wasn't pretty at times, but it, it worked. So How long it's nice to be, a, 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 to be involved in such a monumental event like this. We're not gonna build a state. I'm, in my career, in my lifetime, I probably won't ever see another uh, stadium built like this. So it was, you only get it one chance in a lifetime to do something like this. How long have you been working on the bill? And you two represented my Gosh, two years. Well, we've been authors and co-authors for <clears throat> when we were in the minority, when I was in the minority. I mean, it's been, but but just him and I yeah. for almost two years now. Yeah. 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 But both of you independently go back six, seven years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I, my first conversation with uh, the new owners of the Vikings, uh, and their representative, Lester Bagley, was in 2005, shortly after they took over ownership. And uh, <clears throat> I was a part of the effort to get a new uh, football stadium and Metrodome, a new Metrodome facility in 2006. We didn't get it out of committee. Uh, we took another stab at it again in 2010. I was a part of that effort and a co-author of that bill. Um, and. Uh, then last year we had another bill, Senator Rosen and I had a bill in 2011, but we knew uh, we weren't going to be able to move that at all with the state facing the budget crisis we had. And in spite of everybody saying, why don't you bring it up, why don't you bring it up, we said no, we're going to deal with the budget. And we did. And so after the budget got resolved, uh, we started working uh, towards this bill that we introduced now in 2000, 2012. And uh, you know, it's. So a classic example of the need for patience and perseverance. Uh, the time was right. I think all of you uh, helped uh, get the public in Minnesota really engaged in this. And if I were to point to a turning point here, uh, the public finally came to say, look, whether you're for this or, or not, get it decided. We're tired of this issue going on with no decision. And I think that this year was one of the real turning points. Uh, where the public finally said, we've had enough, uh, whether you're for it or against it, decide it. Senator, you put some yeah. criticism in there for the, for the way things went down yesterday, yeah. behind closed doors. Yeah. You said even on the Senate floor, <clears throat> you know, it's open, we're not going to do it behind closed doors and so on. And yet, on the final day, even though it had been public hearings up until that point, on the final day, the final details were done in private. Can you explain why that was necessary? Well, this, is, this was a very complicated deal, and you're dealing with a private business. To, and uh, to take them in, in negotiations in public like that, that's, I mean, the, there, there was parts of this term sheet that were, that had to be negotiated, and that's, that's very difficult for a business to step up in front of a conference committee like that. And, and besides, I mean, this is a, this is a one-on-one, -on -one, and many times you all know that, I mean, you've seen the, see how this works at the very end when you have complicated bills that need to move forward. I could probably list 
several right now that have negotiated um, just with leadership or the governor's office that, ha that have to be done. And, uh, we, you know, we did have the public hearings. I think I trumped you by three times as my <laughs> many hours of public hearings, yeah. uh, 12 or 11 hours on the floor. There was a lot of issues there. But in the end, what turned out is we got a great compromise for the state. And I think the, the partners uh, at the NFL, the Vikings, got a wonderful stadium going forward. And then Minneapolis has has it back in their hometown, in their in their backyard. So these are things that, that just happened at this place. It's You have to... <clears throat> to those of us who go back to the uh, target field mm -hmm. debate where there's there just seemed to be a lot more um, anti any such subsidy uh, from sort of representatives of low-income people, et cetera. And I didn't sense as much of that this time around. Am I wrong? Or I know it's not not to say it wasn't difficult, but it just seemed like there wasn't as much of that kind of opposition. Well, that's uh, probably a fair uh, observation. I was involved very much with the, uh, the Twin Stadium and uh, started working on that uh, in 2003 when I was first elected, working with Jerry Bell and the uh, Twins organization. And, uh, you know, that was a difficult process, but having been through that and be a, been a part of that whole process, this was f much more difficult and much more contentious, maybe not so much in the public as it, as it uh, was in the whole legislative process, just very contentious. We have our colleagues that were standing up yelling at us, and uh, what she has had to endure is just unbelievable. But she's handled it with grace. She's handled it with dignity and in a very professional way. And that's why we got to the end. Just like child if either, if either, yeah, if either, one of, if either one of us had thrown a fit and said, you know, we could have easily walked away. But we weren't going to walk away because no. we wanted to get this done and we knew we were going to have to suffer a lot of uh, slings and arrows in the process. Do either of you uh, view this as a crowning enough achievement that uh, that either of you would consider, you know, walking out on a high note here, uh, uh, re retiring? This press conference is over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. You know, I, the thought occurred to me when I first, when the Republican plan came out and they gave me, they took away all the district that I love and grown to love and hopefully they love me too. But uh, the, the court's uh, plan gave it all back to me, 96% of it. And you grow attached to these people. You grow attached to serving the people out there. And um, if I can serve them just a, you know, one more term, I'm going to do it. And uh, it's, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off and I got, you know, Get, get some rest and um, reflect a little bit, but I'm I'm ready to run again. Absolutely. And yeah, Senator, are you uh, are you disappointed that the majority of the yes votes came from the Democrats? Oh no, I'm not surprised at all. Not a, not surprised at all. It is a bipartisan effort, totally. And uh, I wish there was more from the Republicans, but there there are some um, some very strong views on that and. This is this is how these big projects get done. It's in a bipartisan way. So, perfect example of it. With the fifty million dollars up front that the Vikings put in additional. Would, did anything change with their operating costs? Did those go down, or is it still thirteen million from them and seven and a half from the still city? Yeah. Yeah. Still the same. Still the same. Okay. Yep. Yep. Hey, thank you. You didn't get a chance to answer. Yeah, the question. Are you going oh. to <laughs> Uh, you know, I've always told people, you can expect me to run again. Uh, you know, I've been up for election, re-election, now I guess 14 times in my political career. And you can expect that that's the case. And I'm going to savor this moment. Uh, these campaigns go on much too long. Uh, we'll talk about the next campaign after we uh, get a little time here to, to savor this moment. Have a beer? Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> here you go. Senator, I guess you're a little late. Can you tell me what this means to you and just what you're feeling right now after, after this long, hard battle? Well, my knees are shaking a little bit, I'll have to admit. I mean, it's, this is, this is, um, this is a, I, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm was, speechless. And why was this so important to you? It was a lot of, um, a lot of work, a lot of compromise, a 
lot of collaboration, <coughs> a lot of relationships, arguments. Oh, there were some arguments. Um, but in the end, we have a really good product that we just delivered to the state. <coughs> Senator, do you think it was fair for Senator Bach to use it as a DFL campaign plug on, at the end of the at the end of the session there? Well, he started off really strong, <laughs> kind of went mm, south there for a while, and then came back. So <laughs> that's, I mean, no, he delivered the votes. What, what can I say? I'm not gonna. <laughs> he delivered the votes, so I, I and I thank him, and I will have a, a chance to give him a nice big hug. The one thing I really appreciated about his talk, and I did uh, have a chance to hear it, was his stressing the leadership that you need to have and the leadership that she has shown, uh, and that he and Senator Senjum have shown. I mean, they're in leadership positions. They stood up and said, let's get this done. With one of the previous questions, I'm thinking I should keep her down here for an hour so she doesn't get up on the floor <laughs> or anything, but we've worked through that, right? Yeah, we worked, worked through, through that. that. Now I have to go Thank up there and cry. Thank you so much. Up. We better go up and respect the... <laughs> Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for being. You are watching the authors of the Viking Stadium bill, Senator Julie Rosen and Representative Maury Lanning, immediately following the passage of the Viking Stadium bill from the Senate. As you heard, they called the process that followed this bill a roller coaster ride, which ultimately resulted in the passage of the bill despite staunch opposition to the use of gambling revenue for the stadium. Now, the governor will sign the bill. He plans to meet with the media, along with Vikings owners Ziggy and Mark Wilf, in about 15 minutes. Our legislative coverage ends at 6 o'clock tonight, but remember, we continue to cover news conferences and committees throughout the interim, and Capitol Report will continue to feature the issues that are relevant to Minnesotans. Capitol Report can be viewed each week on the Minnesota Channel, and all of our Senate coverage can be found online at senate.mn. So, from all of us at Senate Media and House Public Information Services, I'm Julie Barkey. Thank you for tuning in to our 2012 legislative coverage. We'll see you next year.